Okay, it says live. I can't see the comment section. section. Good evening Miles, what's wrong with Okay, there's an issue, I can't see the comment section properly. That's maximum size. I can see everybody's comments, but for some reason, it won't make the screen bigger. Oh, here we go. Yes, now it's working. But extremely laggy. Okay, hi Miles. Mike is typing from YouTube. Everybody else is typing from Cameras Wild. Um, no, this is terrible. Overlap on the comments. Good evening, CMF. Good evening, CMF. Good evening, Miles. Yep. No, this is. I like the background, let's go. What is your YouTube channel? Um, Crypto Miles is my YouTube channel. But there's an issue. Um, I can't make the comments go up and down. Okay, one second, one second, one second. We're gonna figure this out because this is a new platform and we gotta figure this out. So maybe I can see the comments from my MacBook. You look wide. Are you streaming on YouTube? No, I'm streaming on iPhone. Interesting enough. I'm streaming on iPhone, but I want to see something. If it doesn't work out, we'll just go back to X Live. But it's just a test drive to see what is what. Okay, so. Until I figure it out. Oh, okay. I can see the comment section here. Miles, can you see my comments? It's funky. Yes, I can see your comments. Good evening, Miles, the CMF. Looks good, Miles. Let's go, Dawn. Okay. Yes. Okay, I can see the comments on my MacBook. And I'm using the camera on my iPhone because I got this. Oh, can't be seen. Anybody can see this? Yep, I got this, which is a Logi Streamcast. It's what you would use that works with OBS and all of these softwares. But I uh, had difficulties connecting this to that and this to that. Okay, YouTube is fine, but on X it looks weird. How does it look on X? Just out of curiosity, let me just see how it looks on X. So on YouTube, it looks okay. On X, it looks weird. How does it look on X? You see me? I'm on YouTube. Yep. Below, I see you're on YouTube. Yeah, I can read the comments on my on my MacBook, which is a good thing. Hello, about there, news on XRP? Yes, we have a lot of news to go through. We have so much news to go through today. But first, before we go into the news, let's figure this out so we can make this work. And if we can't, I'm going to obviously go back to X until I do figure it out. Are you on YouTube? Yes, I'm on YouTube as well. YouTube is looking good. I'm on YouTube. YouTube is looking good. Hi, Miles of CMF. Are you on YouTube? Yes, I'm on YouTube. Miles, Jay, miss your apartment background. Hello, CMF. Comments overlap. The comments are overlapping. I see your comments on X. You see my comments on X. I can see Hyper Snipers coming in from YouTube. Okay, let me see how this looks on X. Today is going to be a test trial day to see what how things look like. Love your background. Let's go. 
Okay, so how do I look on X? We're about to find out now. Okay, go into my profile. Um, click on this. Okay. Okay, it's not bad on X. I thought it was going to be a lot more worse. It's a bit stretched out on X. No? It's zoomed in on X. Are you on TikTok too? No, I'm just on YouTube and um, X. Finally, I can comment. It's Tito here. Let's go, Tito. But yeah, no, it's on you on X. Can it be seen on here? There we go. This is how I look like on X. I think that's okay, no? You can see the ring light as well. I think that's how it looks on X. So that's okay, no? Or was that weird? The comments are overlapping. Yes, the comments are overlapping. So you can see YouTube typers and you can see X typers at the same time. Which is good. Scroll down. Comments overlap and act uh, on act. You see the comments in the box and then another version underneath when you scroll down. Okay, that's uh, that's what she said. That's what she said. Uh, I cannot comment on X, but you can comment on YouTube. Yes, it looks fine. Okay. Can't find you on YouTube. Um, Camel, the link for my YouTube channel is on Telegram. The link for my YouTube channel is on Telegram. I'm going to send you a pic on Telegram to see how I can see you. Okay, hi. Troy, good to see you. How are you doing? It's okay, Miles. Um, can't believe X hasn't fixed the problem yet. Yeah. Um, thumbs up if you think this is a good method to use from now on. So thumbs up or thumbs down. Do you think this is good to be using from now on? It's a new platform. So... Um, thumbs up if this is good. We can stream at the same time on X and on YouTube. I'm using um, Restream, which is the one that BBC and um, Forbes News and everybody else uses. Um, so I can do X and YouTube at the same time, which is good in my point of view. But is it good for you guys? Yes or no? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, ironic. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, thumbs up. Besides the teething problems, um, it's much better than your old boring background. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, thumbs up. Okay. Always good, Miles. It's a very good idea. Okay, because I, I thought, you know, um, we can do... It's a very good idea. Let's go. So I thought we can do, you know, um, TikTok at the same time as well. But the issue with that is, um, if I get one more strike on TikTok, that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to be banned on TikTok. One more strike, and I'm pretty much banned on TikTok, I think. So I thought, let me not involve TikTok, and I can still run my TikTok on the side, and maybe put some short clips and some short news into TikTok instead. And I thought, maybe, you know, just stick to YouTube and X at the same time for the time being. And then we'll see how things go from there. And then we can maybe go back on TikTok. But I'm trying to put the CMF um, background back on as well. So soon we'll probably have the CMF background. So look just like um, how we used to do on TikTok, essentially. So on TikTok, we start the CMF background and everything. We can, but we're pretty much going to get there slowly, slowly. So it's going to look just as how the old CMF was, basically, with the background, with the news and everything else. So we're going to slowly go back to that style, but it's going to be on X and YouTube. So good. Okay. This is great. Let's go. Thumbs up. Let's go. Hi, Miles and all CMF. JP, good to see you as well, brother. How you doing? I'm very zoomed in, I think, on one platform. Hi, Miles and all CMF. Let's go. So today we have a lot of news to go through. I don't know why it keeps on blinking on the screen. So today we have a lot of news to go through. Also, thank you so much to everybody that's been um, retweeting the live show as well. Thank you so much to everybody that's been retweeting the live show on X. I don't know if you can retweet the live show on YouTube, but I appreciate the likes that I'm getting on YouTube as well. And I appreciate all the likes on 
um, X as well. Tell me some good news. Yes, I will. The only bad part is that we can't be moderators. Yes, for now. Let's see how things go. And uh, maybe there's a way around moderators as well. But the good thing is the people from YouTube and the people from X can talk to each other inside the comment section. That's a good thing. So you, can, you guys can see each other's comments. So people who comment on YouTube can see people who comment on X and people who comment on X can see people who comment on YouTube, which is a good thing. Can you see my name? It's Denise here. Yes, I can, Denise. I can see your name on YouTube. Okay. Okay, let me just connect. Wireless mouse. There we go. Much more simple. Okay, so. Um, tell me some good news. Yes, I'm going to tell you some news. we got a lot of news to go through on today's live show. A lot of news. Can you see my comments? Yes, I can, Denise. Uh, no keep change in the background. It's okay to see different backgrounds. Okay, it's okay to see different backgrounds. Okay, so we'll keep on changing the backgrounds. I want to be able to moderate, moderate or oh, why does it do this is what I don't understand. See that part is annoying. There we go, it's fixed. Looks brilliant. Let's go. Whoa, the comments are scrolled up so much. This is so new to me. Nice background. Let's go. Let's hope there's a settlement this month and a speculation. Yes, let's hope. This is just annoying. Okay, so on today's live show. Before we start the live show, just like always, Miles is blinking. Yes, I'm fully aware of that. How many followers have you now, Miles, on YouTube? About 600 um, subscribers on um, X, roughly the same, I would say. Now, before we start the live show, just like always, disclaimer of this live show is not financial advice, not political advice, and whatever I say is only for entertainment purposes. Um, this live show is called the CMF Live Show, where we talk about how the world is evolving into a digital space. Um, we share recent news that's happening around the world regarding the blockchain space and the CBDC space as well. And um, we also do Q&As as well, which means if you have a question, put it down in the comment sections. I will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Is it the same way to like Miles? Yes, it's the same way to like Miles. Now everything is fine, both YouTube and X. Exactly. Now everything is fine, both YouTube and X. So, a lot of interesting things are happening today around the world. We have news from the UK, news from South Africa, news from Australia, news from um, Ripple, BlackRock, and so much other news to go through, and so much other opinions and perspectives to go through from different major institutions out there. But the first one we're going to be going through is regarding Ripple Labs and the CEO of Ripple Labs, Brad. So yesterday I shared with everybody that there's a Paris blockchain event going on and Brad, which is the CEO of Ripple Labs, was also there giving a massive speech on so many things that's happening on XLP Ledger and Ripple Labs and blockchain space in general. Now, um, he also mentioned some other things that I didn't mention yesterday that the news has just revealed today. So Ripple CEO speaks on the prospects of seeing an XLP ETF. While some Bitcoin uh, maximists would like to believe that the SEC could only approve spot Bitcoin ETFs, Brad emphasized the Paris Blockchain Week that he thinks the US market will witness the launch of the ETFs tracking other crypto assets besides BTC. Brad actually made some interesting points regarding XRP and essentially saying that XRP could be on the verge of, you know, next becoming an ETF because it does have that regulatory clarity, if you want to say, uh, even though the case hasn't still ended, but it is heading towards that route. The Ripple CEO recently reaffirmed his confidence and in current market conditions. This is what Brad said word for word at the Paris event, in uh, at the, Paris, the blockchain Paris event. I think there will be other ETFs, he disclosed. However, Brad emphasized that while these e ETFs could emerge, it might take a long time before they could hit the market. Ripple's CEO also um, said that the SEC could delay ETF launches 
According to him, this is projected delays were due to the SEC's aggressive stance. Notably, the securities regulators um, has continued to delay a decision on multiple spot Ethereum ETF filings on his desk, for example. In addition, reports suggest that the SEC is looking to classify Ethereum as a security, a move which could potentially migrate chances of ETF approvals. With every other asset besides Bitcoin at a risk of being labeled a security besides um, Bitcoin, and let's just say Ripple as another one, XRP, Brad noted that the United States XRP has also attained legal clarity alongside Bitcoin. Essentially, this clarity boosts chances of XRP securing a spot ETF product over any other crypto asset out there. However, some crypto commentators have argued that the SEC would not approve a spot if, um, XRP ETF as long as the case with Ripple lingers. Moreover, no asset manager has been bold enough to make filings for the product with the sustained calls directed to BlackRock, which is facts. Um, no other company right now has applied for an XRP ETF because of this case that is still lingering. But Brad did mention that alongside Bitcoin, essentially XRP is the only one that has some sort of legal clarity compared to any other crypto asset out there. Um, we haven't got clarity for any other asset out there so far. However, we did recently have essentially the Coinbase case when it came to some sort of a resolution um, when the SEC technically lost on secondary sales again, even in the Coinbase case which is good news. Okay, so the conversation is not working yet. There we go, it's working. Just out of curiosity, everybody can hear me, right? Do you think XRP ETF will be before ETF? ETF? Um, possibility. You never know when it comes to this scenario. So Kamal asked the question of, do you think XRP ETF will be before ETH ETF? There's a possibility. Look, if the XRP case, if the Ripple case scenario comes to an end as soon as possible, then yes, there is a possibility. So yes, there is a possibility. Um, so I was reading the comment section at the same time. Yes, there is a possibility um, that we could have another ETF before we have an Ethereum ETF. It doesn't mean we have to go in order. It doesn't mean it has to be Bitcoin first, which we did have. It doesn't mean it has to be Ethereum second and anything else third and something else fourth. We have to go in a line. No. We could have mix and match type of scenarios where some other project gets an ETF before another project and i give you the scenario of what etfs could be in line and i said this yesterday as well if you want to know what etf is pretty much next on the list of etfs we do know for a fact there has been multiple institutions who have applied for ethereum etfs that's very true but we also do know for a fact that the next etfs are all coming out of grayscale's essentially portfolio Grayscale is the one leading the charge regarding ETFs. They were the ones that sued, you know, with the SEC and essentially pushed that approval on onto happening. Um, so Grayscale's portfolio carries projects like Bitcoin. It carries projects like Ethereum, AVAX, Solano, XRP, and some other assets. So those are essentially what's going to be next in ETFs. And we could have an XRP or something else before an Ethereum ETF, but somebody has to file for it. That's the only issue. Because nobody has filed for an XRP ETF only because of this case, then we still have the issue of, you know, uh, maybe the Ethereum ETF could be first because nobody's filed for an XRP ETF. Until this case is over, nobody's going to be filing for an XRP ETF. So this case has to end before anybody decides to file for an XRP ETF. So the chances of an XRP ETF before an Ethereum ETF, very slim chance. Very slim chance because nobody's filed for it yet. Logically, so I'm just reading the comment section now. So perfectly, so you can hear me. Yes, Tor, you can hear me. Yep, you can hear me perfectly. You can hear me. Um, yes, 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 yes. Is it true that Ripple? Is it true that Ripple and the SEC are having a closed door meeting? No, it's not true. 
Um, it's not true that um, Ripple and uh, the SEC are having a closed door meeting. Well, we don't know. So the SEC is having a meeting today. So the SEC is having a closed door meeting today. But we don't know if it's between Ripple Labs and the SEC because it is a it is a mention. So we don't know what the closed door meeting is with the SEC today. It could be with Ripple Labs or it could be something related to the SEC or some other case that they're going on through, essentially. You know, the SEC is going through a case with Coinbase, with Kraken, with Binance, with Ripple, and some other minor major cases out there as well. So it could just be related to one of those cases. We don't know. And there was no mentions of Ripple Labs on the documentations of what's going on behind closed doors today at any sort of a way. So we don't know. It could be and it could not be what's going on behind closed doors. Why does it say um, Restream? Restream is what I'm using to do multi-streaming. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can hear me. Good evening, everyone. So, good to see you. How are you doing? Good evening. How are you doing? Hello. How are you doing, world? If the case was over today, how long time would it take to file for an XRP ETF, in your opinion? If the case was ended today, how long would it take for an XRP ETF to be filed, in my opinion? Straight away. But the approval isn't going to be straight away. So um, regarding an XRP, you know, let's just say, for example, in this scenario, based on this question, you know, for example, the case comes to an end today. How fast can we get the XRP ETF? Not that fast, realistically. Um, the, the appealing could be straight away. So XRP wins the case or some sort of a settlement or a final judgment happens, for example. Today, for example. By tomorrow, BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they can all apply for an XRP ETF. The chance of it being approved could still take a few months. It is the SEC by the end of the day. I mean, at the end of the day, it is the SEC. But we could also still see Ripple Labs pushing for that approval for a much more quicker response. So the, them appealing for, you know, I mean, not appealing, them filing for an XRP ETF is straight away. But the chance of approval still will take a few months. Good evening, CMF peeps. How are you doing, XRP? Good to see you as well. So... That was the XRP, that was the ripple news that we had to go through. Now, interesting news from Australia regarding CBDCs. Apparently, Australia is getting closer and closer day by day to the idea of CBDCs in Australia. So, Australians wouldn't price retail CBDCs for its privateness or security, RBA fines. Now, the RBA, obviously, the Reserve Financial Institution of Australia, has examined the worth most people would place on retail central lender digital foreign exchange CBDCs appeared at willingness to fork out using CBDCs in a digital pockets and privateness rewards that the CBDC would possibly present. Apparently, there's an idea going on right now in Australia. There's an idea going on right now in Australia, um, essentially that if they do go into CBDCs, which is going to be happening, Australia is a part of the G20 countries and so on. Now, the idea is if Australia does go into CBDCs, they're going to be charging you five Australian dollars um, every year to keep your information private. So the government in Australia is going to be charging you, apparently, if they, when they do go into CBDCs, five Australian, um, do, Australian dollars a year to keep your information private when we go into CBDCs. Miles, can you see my comments as I cannot see them on the other screen? Yes. Thank you, brother. I can see your comments. I can see your comments, funky brother. I can't text on YouTube. Troy, I can see you on X. The price would pump as fast as they file it. Yeah, the price would pump as fast as they file it. True, regarding XLB when the filing does go through. Very, very true. Um, hello, Mars CMF. Coin, good to see you. How you doing? So, um, CBDCs in Australia, apparently they're going to be charging you five Australian dollars to keep your information private on CBDCs in Australia. The RBA defined its CBDC as a digital foreign money that's even safer and doubtlessly way more personal than industry than um, industrial lender deposits and made use of discrete determination experiment to judge neighborhood valuations of merchandise without having marketplaces. The analyst considered as a charge for privateness and safety options as much as five Australian um, um, kilos, which is Australian dollars essentially, um, which is the same as three US dollars. It included that individuals shelling out five Australian dollars for each calendar 12 months would make about 100 million Australian dollars in service charges, not only substantial appeal, 
um, quantity to overwhelm the collection of different concerns applicable to the CBDC issuance of willpower. Apparently, the Australian government is going to be using this. Um, the Australian government is going to be using the five Australian dollars they get from everybody and that pays yearly to keep their information private to help the Australian economy somehow. Um, it's very weird, you know, the government charging you money to use your own money. Not only are they controlling you, you know, regarding CBDCs of seizing, freezing and so on, but the idea of even charging you yearly to use that money and keep your information private, keep your data private is interesting enough. Um, so apparently if you don't pay to keep your private, so I'm, I'm guessing if you don't pay the five Australian dollars yearly to keep your information private on CBDCs, they're probably just going to sell it to advertisement companies, most likely, which means you're going to get a lot of adverts. I don't know how, I mean, it's just very weird. The idea of it going very weird. Now, uh, deficiencies also, just to go on the idea of CBDCs and social credit systems, that apparently is playing into it as well. The safety uh, worth of a CBDC lies in its deficiency of credit score rating likelihood, which is inherent in the monetary establishment deposits as banking corporations can fail making use of information from 2022. The RBA has a, capable, has a capability of exhibiting that willingness to maintain an account with the RBA instead of a business financial institution is within the damaging. People could be able to spend um, significantly lower than Australian dollars for every calendar 12 months to not do it if they don't want to. Um, and they also went on to say, word for word, that is common with financial institution deposits in Australia now being preserved as a protected and sound, alike, and sound kind of cash and boldly money issued by the Reserve Monetary Establishment of Australia, preserving with to be obtainable instead different. Neighbourhood resistance to CBDCs might additionally shape these outcomes, the RBA claimed. The survey assumed using essentially a process wherein the RBA would open accounts for patron of the, pub, of the general public, most do well and trial CBDCs are going to be going on in Australia and make us of the knowledgeable providers of the physical establishments in current knowledgeable providers of CBDC Finnish customers. The report famous that some policymakers anticipate to type an intermediate CBDC which might have a distinctive and privateness picks. Privateness's details have been significantly way more complicated. Previous analysts have suggested that women and men remarkably price privateness However, normally Fargo privateness measures is observed, creating its um, price troubles to elevate. The advantages of attained confirmed a sturdy want for sharing data with physical, um, essentially, the Australian government. So, look, there's apparently the idea of privacy is going to be, if you can afford it, we will keep you private, essentially, um, in Australia. It's going to be a time period in Australia where if you can afford to pay for it, they will keep you private, your data private, from third-party companies and when you're using CBDCs in Australia, which is ridiculous to think about it, where you would have to pay yearly to the government to keep your data private from third-party companies in Australia is what they're looking at. And they said they're going to use that money in Australia to help build on Australia. I'm doubtful on that. I think that money is going to be obviously going to politicians' pockets, but we will have to see over time. But the idea of, you know, paying your Australian government to keep your information private from third parties is just immoral, is what I would have to say. Morning all. Shelley, good to see you as well. How are you doing, Shelley? Let me just go through the comment section. Let me see where everybody typed in. YouTube is king. Two days ago, you said the crypto market will be 10 to 12 trillion dollars. That money will be retail or institutional. Uh, institutional. The government has never been arrested and has never been interested in crypto. Now they want all the cream as usual. Clowns. Hello, Mars and CMF. Lena, good to see you as well. How are you doing? By the way, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that's tuned into this live stream. Thank you so much to everybody that's tapping on the screen as well on TikTok, on TikTok. Thank you so much to everybody that's tapping on the screen on X and for all the likes. Thank you so much to everybody that's tapping on the screen on X for all the likes. And thank you so much to everybody that's tapping on the screen on YouTube as well, CMF. Shelly, good to see you. How you doing? Government or criminals? Corrupt. Yep. Anything to have to pay money to the government. Anything to have to pay money to the government. Yep, pretty much. It's ridiculous what Australia is going to be doing. Now, 
Interesting enough, the idea of cryptocurrencies was always seen as a bad thing from banks and financial institutions, but obviously the tables have turned. We have BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, Vanguard, Fidelity, um, Grayscale. Everybody's pretty much in the concept of cryptocurrencies. Everybody's trading. Everybody's adding to their portfolios. BlackRock is coming out with new funds. They started the BTC fund and then the Ethereum fund for regarding tokenized assets. And now they're doing the USDC fund, which we'll go through as well. But um, something interesting is happening. Cryptocurrencies regarding HSBC Bank. So, cryptocurrency statement from HSBC Bank. We have performed millions of tests, is what HSBC has said. In a recent statement, HSBC, one of the world's largest bankings and financial services institutions, advocated giving cryptocurrencies a 1-5% to weight in diversified portfolio. Essentially, HSBC Bank is saying that if you want to add cryptocurrencies to your portfolio, go for it, is what HSBC Bank is saying, not me. But HSBC Bank is essentially saying that if you want to add cryptocurrencies to your portfolios, go for it on a 1-5% to percent basis. It will actually do you wonders. HSBC is conducting extensive research into the role of cryptocurrencies and can play in multi-asset allocations. The bank ran millions of similarities on, on dollar-dominated portfolios, each changing the weights of the assets basket. The results have consistently shown that even a small exposure to cryptocurrencies can increase portfolio diversification. The bank first explored the potential of cryptocurrencies in multi-asset allocations two years ago. At a time, they found strong statistical evidence that an allocation to cryptocurrencies could help diversify multi-asset allocations. This finding appears to remain valid today. After rerunning millions of portfolios using a new data sample, HSBC reached very similar results. The bank argues that allocating a small allocation of 1-5% to to cryptocurrencies can significantly increase portfolio diversifications. So, Apparently, if you add um, cryptocurrencies to your portfolio, it, act, it can actually do a lot better for you. And you can, interesting enough, make quite a lot of money and essentially adding profits to your portfolio. According to HSBC Bank, HSBC Bank is saying if you want to go inside cryptocurrencies, go for it, but allocate only 1% to 5% of your portfolio to it. Is there any comment section here? Sorry. Also, if you have any questions, put it down in the comment sections. If you're watching this live show for the first time ever, um, if you have any questions, put it down in the, com put it down in the comment section. Hello, Mazda CMF. So, good to see you. How are you doing? I'm not surprised, to be honest, is what Shelly said. Lucky I have XRP. Let's go, Shelly. I missed the start of the live. What did I miss? And um, we'll go through at the end of the live show as well, just in case anybody else missed the start of the live as well. No problem. We'll do it just at the end of the live show. Morning, Dennis. If you're sending some sunshine over to me. So, that's the news from HSBC Bank. Now, um, Coinbase is not the only crypto company that's about to go public, that's went public for a while now. So if you were inside the cryptocurrency space and you were looking at Coinbase going public and doing quite well for itself, there is now another crypto platform that's going to be going public, maybe this year, maybe next year. But apparently the crypto company, the crypto exchange is valued at $3 billion. And it is a essentially a crypto exchange from Thailand. A Thailand crypto exchange valued around $3 billion is going to be going public as an IPO. Now, we all saw what happened with Coinbase when it started from nothing and ended up being something, especially after it went public. Um, so you can have a, you know, a grasp of a picture of what this project, I mean, what this platform is going to be doing. This is the first night on your live. I love it. This is the first night on your live. I love it. Let's go. Miles, I have 95% of financial proof. Who's in crypto? Let's go, funky brother. So, Thai crypto exchange, BitCup, uh, may be valued as high as $3 billion in an IPO CEO. The owner of Thai crypto exchange, BitCup Online, which plans to sell shares to the public next year, could be valued as high as $3 billion. BitCup Capital CEO said 
Bitcoin Capital signaled its intentions to sell shares to the public in 2023, but that didn't go through. Letter to shareholders that didn't um, give a time, time frame. Now, the CEO told Bloomberg earlier this month that an IPO was planned next year and the company was in the process of hiring financial advisors. Thailand's biggest crypto exchange provides about 80% of the Bangkok-based parents' profit and is 9.2% owned by Asper Innovations. This firm was valued at about 6 billion baht, which is around $165 million in Series A fundraisings last July. A price-to-earnings ratio of 10 to 30 would put our valuation between 1 billion to 3 billion US dollars said the CEO in a message on his LinkedIn when asked about the IPO valuation. He did not say how much the company was looking to raise. So if you want to be going for uh, another company like, for example, Coinbase, Coinbase went into an IPO, did quite well for itself. And anybody else that went for Coinbase's IPO did quite well for themselves as well on the earlier days. Um, there's another crypto company that's going to be heading towards the IPO market. Now, they did say next year, but they're also aiming if they can get their financial advice and paperwork done for this year. So if you want to look at the IPO market space for the next crypto platform to go public, it's probably going to be BitCup. Um, it's the number one biggest um, crypto exchange platform in Thailand, most likely in Asia as well on those aspects. And it's going to be valued at $3 billion going on to the public market, which is going to be absolutely crazy. But that's only if you want to go for the stock market as well. You should be proud of yourself, Miles, because we are proud to have you. Let's go XLP then. Thank you for the kind words. Let's go. Miles, I have 95% of my financial portfolios is in crypto. Let's go. Forget HSBC telling us about 5%. You should be proud. Let's go. Um, hello, Miles, my brother, and CMF. Dazzle here. Dazzle, let's go. How you doing, Dazzle? How you been? What up, though, Miles and family? Hope all is well, though. Ray, good to see you as well. How you doing, brother? So. That's from Thailand. Now, moving forward to, actually, you know what? Before I do the next news, I want to do this news because this news is extremely interesting. Apparently, there's an idea going around in London. Okay, so apparently there's an idea going around in London. Now, if they're going to do it in London, most likely they're going to be doing it in other G20 countries as well. As I've said previously, if any G20 country does something, other G20 countries typically tend to follow. So if the UK does something, the EU will do it next, and Canada will follow, Australia will follow, America will follow, and so on and so on, because they're all G20 countries on the same declaration in the G20 summit. That happened in New Delhi last year. So, apparently, in London, they're going to be giving out £100 in crypto to every citizen. London mayoral candidate wants to give £100 in crypto to every resident. Maryland candidate Brian Rose wants to give every person in London £100 worth of a new crypto token on the plans revealed today. Going under the working title of the London token is what they're calling it. Rose plans would see a £1 billion, liquidity, one pound, uh, a one billion pound liquidity pool created by a one-off tax of the profits made of the city's financial institutions. According to Rose's campaign team, the plan is to make new cryptocurrencies accepted across London transport network and usable for paying council bills, parking charges, and other expenses. So, uh, apparently they're going to be doing, um, you know, cryptocurrencies, only for London citizen, only for um, London's um, residents. So only London residents will be receiving a hundred pounds worth of a cryptocurrency, apparently called London token, is what they're calling it. They're calling it London token, a hundred pounds worth of cryptocurrency, and that currency is going to be used for public transport. Apparently, it's going to be used for London public transport, and it's going to boost London's economy in general because it'll provide a one billion dollar um, pool. A one, pa a one billion pound dollar pool, essentially. That could be quite interesting. But let's see if the plan goes through. So if you do live in London, which I do as well, um, apparently you're going to be receiving a hundred pound London token sooner or later, which can be used for public transport. Worth of cryptocurrencies only.
it's they also said it's a great way to get everybody adapted into cryptocurrencies in London as well. So they said it's a great way to get everybody adapted into cryptocurrencies in London by releasing a London token. Dazzle, let's go, let's go. Can I have can I have mine XRP? Can I have mine XRP? Oh, can you have yours in XRP instead of the London token? I'm in London and I wanted an XRP as I will turn it into 1 million. Let's go. I missed the start. Are we live streaming on multiple platforms today? Yes. Shelly, we're live streaming on um, X and YouTube at the same time. Um, we're live streaming on X and YouTube at the same time. That's why the comment section is people from YouTube, from the CMF, and X... CMF members from X and CMF members from YouTube. They're all, communicate, they're all um, communicating with each other inside the comment sections right now. So we're live on YouTube and X at the same time, Shelly. First live show ever to be multi-streaming. We're giving it a go today to see how things go. Um, hey, Miles, is it true about the US's banned MEXC? I don't know. There's been rumors regarding the US banning MEXC, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, yeah, MEXC. I'm not sure yet um, regarding the US banning um, MEXC, but there's been rumors around it, multiple rumors around it. But apparently, um, the bill for TikTok is passed. So apparently, TikTok is going to be banned in America. I saw something on that. I don't know if that was a rumor, if that was true as well. But apparently, I do know that the bill on TikTok was passed. So TikTok is going to be banned in a six months' time or something, if I'm not mistaken, unless it's sold. So that bill got passed. Woohoo. Go Miles. Yes, it's yes, um, this is awesome. Let's go, Shelly. X and YouTube. Hell yeah, brother. From another mother. Outstanding. Let's go, Ray. Um, yeah, we're live on both channels. On both platforms, um, but apparently, you know, the CMF moved perfect timing because if we were still on TikTok, we could have been hit by that band as well. But now, because we're on YouTube and X, um, and it's a good, perfect timing for us to move away from TikTok by doing X live shows and YouTube live shows now. Can you look into that um, for us, please? Yes, regarding MEXC, I will definitely look into it because I use MEXC as well quite a lot. I'll definitely look into it, no problem. Now, after this live show, I'll look into it and I'll put it inside a Telegram. Oh, at the end of the live show, I'll take a look into it. No problem, actually. Now, next news to go through. BCA. And if anybody did tune in late, a little bit late on this live show, don't worry. At the end of the live show, I'll go through everything we talked about. Miles, your moustache is growing and now you look like Pakistan. You're not Persian. <laughs> Let's go, funky brother. Nope, still Persian. Um, is it? I'm going to go to the Barbers Sunday. What day is it today? Friday? Thursday? Friday. So, tomorrow, day after. Aha, that was funny, right? <laughs> Thanks. Let's go, Sue. Now, um, BCA Research. BCA Research says um, Bitcoin running to 100k explains the unspoken reason. BCA Research, a leading independent provider of global investments research, predicted in a recent um, report that Bitcoin could eventually raise above $100,000. The company attributes this potential's rise to Bitcoin's non-features, uh, which makes it in likely to gold. So essentially, BCA Research has came forward and said that there's a resemblance, you know, there with Bitcoin and gold. There's, there's much more resemblance than most people think about it. Now, according to um, Daval, the chief strategist at BCA Research, Bitcoin and gold are linked because their shared value stems from their non, um, essentially, you know, they hold their value, let's say in simple terms. This value is immune to inflation, bank failures, and even state appropriations in case of Bitcoin. Um, he also goes on to say that Bitcoin controls supply, protects it from being confiscated by inflation. Additionally, the bankruptcy of banks or financial institutions does not cause the investor to lose their cryptocurrencies, even if a government bans Bitcoin. It does not constitute as confiscation as long as there is a global network of Bitcoin holders who value their token for their permissionless. Um, 
Bitcoin's price will rise to $100,000 as the market value given for non-sizability increases significantly and Bitcoin's share of this market grows significantly as well is what was said by the BC, uh, BCA research. Bitcoin reached an all-time high of over $73,000 on March 14th that happened um, has in, uh, and has increased by over 70% this year. The launch of the US spot Bitcoin ETFs this year and the shrinkage of Bitcoin supply ahead of the halving at the end of April have been a major factor in the BTC price increase. That is also very true. The reason why we are essentially looking into this price increase on Bitcoin's value point is because... Uh, for the first time ever. So, so many things are happening for the first time ever that everybody needs to be fully aware of and, you know, essentially keep in the back of their mind. For the first time ever, the Bitcoin mining institutions aren't typically selling their Bitcoins. For the first time ever, exchanges are going through a shortage supply on Bitcoin holdings. There's not that much Bitcoin on exchanges, apart from the one-to-one -one ratio type of scenario. But as in Bitcoin for sales, there ain't that much. Everybody's holding it off the exchanges, essentially. So, in terms of Bitcoin mining institutions, historically they would sell, but Bitcoin mining institutions this time around, according to new data, haven't sold. It, according to previous historic um, details and now, um, there's a lot more Bitcoins off the exchange than rather on the exchange. And also, because we're going to this scenario of the halving, which is the biggest event for Bitcoin in general, um, it's going to look absolutely amazing because, as you all know, if you do know how business works, the, the supply is not that even, but the demand is very high. The demand is actually very high for Bitcoin, but the supply is not there. And there isn't that much supply left and everybody wants it. And do you know how everybody wants it? Because BlackRock's new data came out. BlackRock apparently is closing the gap on how much Bitcoin they're holding compared to Grayscale. BlackRock is getting day by day closer to $20 billion in essentially valuations of BTC ETFs which just shows the demand just BlackRock has, never mind the rest of the Bitcoin ETFs, just BlackRock has humongous, essentially, demand, and the supply is not enough. And as we go into the Bitcoin halving, the supply is going to be a lot more less. So imagine the demand is here, and the supply is here. Price is going to go absolutely ballistic. Amazon is playing a big part in the band because of TikTok shop. Amazon is taking a hit. Yes, that is very true as well regarding TikTok shop and so on. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, TikTok was coming onto everybody's business, which is why they wanted it out of the picture. TikTok, um, you know, essentially ruined the business of YouTube, ruined the business of Facebook, Instagram, and Amazon. And now it's getting hit by the band. And it could be banned within six months now because the bill was just passed on TikTok. So TikTok can be banned. There's a lot of people talking about how they're going to be using VPNs now or moving to Clapper instead of TikTok because the ban has officially been passed now. Um, that was quick, uh, relatively. So a lot of people are moving you know, to Clapper, for example. They're going to be using VPNs sooner or later. But I see it as a blessing in disguise because if you think about it, the CMF, which us in general, the CMF, we moved perfect timing away from TikTok. We moved perfect timing and established ourselves on X. The CMF established itself on X. And now we're establishing ourselves on YouTube and X, two platforms that are going to be here forever, pretty much. So if you think about it, we moved away perfect timing as well. You know, as we all say, you know, one do one, when one door closes, more opens, which is essentially what happened for the CMF. One door closed, which was TikTok more doors open for us and those doors that are open for us in other words x or youtube and so on their platforms they're going to be here forever so we moved away perfect timing if you think about it Miles, what do you think of um parisical coin have you heard of it is it worth the, to take the risk no i haven't heard of it um let me take a look into it now for you no problem No problem. Okay, so is it a new project? I'm guessing, Persico. I 
I heard Clapper is similar interference to TikTok. I've never used it, to be honest. Yeah, it's similar. Um, Clapper is very similar to TikTok, but it's it's not the same at the same time, if you know what I mean. It's similar, but it's not the same as TikTok at the same time. But I think, you know, X and YouTube is the two best platforms we can use, you know, essentially. When TT shuts down, Elon might create a type of marketplace on X, like TikTok shop, unless there, which is a fair point. I saw, honestly, what um, Happy Pisces just said, what Happy Pisces just said makes a lot of sense. I can see Elon Musk doing that because Elon did say that he wants to make X like a platform like WeChat, and WeChat has a marketplace inside of it. So I could potentially see, you know, X um, creating that um, type of platform on, uh, like a marketplace on X as well, because he did say he wants to make it look like WeChat, and WeChat offers a marketplace. So what Happy Pisces just said makes perfect sense, to be honest. Yes. Let me see what that platform uh, Par. Par S I Q. Ah, here we go. Power SIQ. What is it sitting at? Okay, it's horrendous. The charts look horrendous on it. 200 so, uh, circuit supply, total supply. Okay. Uh, okay, let's look at the website of Paris Q. Build your Web3 unicorn. Flexible, robust, and reliable APIs. The website looks off put, off place. Um, no, I wouldn't waste my time with this. It looks odd. Let's see the pricing. It's taking me to another platform to see the pricings. Really? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, no. Uh, forget about that project. The project that you just mentioned to me regarding Paris Q, it doesn't look like it's a genuine project. When it TT shows down, I read I already won on X and I just don't know. I jump on here just for you. Let's go, happy Pisces. Thank you so much for joining on X just for me. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much. And I, I appreciate um, Happy Pisces a lot for doing this and anybody else. So I appreciate everybody from the CMF that, you know, didn't have X accounts and opened up X accounts just so they can tune into the CMF live show. So I appreciate uh, what you did there, Happy Pisces, and I appreciate everybody else that did the same thing as Happy Pisces. You know, they didn't have X accounts and they just created an X account so they could still, you know, tune into the CMF and so on. So thanks so much to everybody that did that as well. I know a lot of you did that. So thank you, honestly. Grace, grayscale, um, though they can sell on BTC, all on the BTC dump. The market then buy back cheaper, but like the plan didn't work. True. Hey, Miles and CMF family. Good to see you, KDC. How you doing? The XL just shut down your X life. Why? Am I still live on X? Members of X, say thumbs up or thumbs down. Yes, I'm still live on X. Okay, because somebody said I wasn't live on X. I was like, what is going on here? I can't see you on... You're live on X. I jumped onto YouTube. I'm... Hi, Miles. Did I miss any news below? Yes, quite a few news, but we'll go through at the end of the live show on what you missed and anybody else that missed the beginning post of the live show as well. At the end of the live show, we'll go through everything as a gist. Yes. They would be on one or the other, Miles, not both. 
Did you see the video debate I sent? The debate between XLP Hate and Holder? Yes, I did. We are loyal to the core. Let's go. I'm flipping between the two platforms. If not, um, you see uh, to watch, bro. Let's go. Um, someone trying to hack your mouse. <laughs> All good. I have both open. X just lagged for a bit. Okay, we're both good. Okay, um, so they're both working. How many uh, viewers do you have on YouTube at the minute? On YouTube, I don't know. On basically on this live show, I can see the count. There's 331 people watching this live show. So this is taking the viewership of both i'm guessing it's taking the viewership of youtube and it's taking the viewership of x i'm putting it into one viewership for me so i have 336 people watching this right now Hey Shelly, so maybe just me, but the X says the broadcast is not available. I think you have to refresh it. Maybe it's intriguing. It's intriguing because it's available on Coinbase Exchange. I wanted it for a second opinion. Thanks. No problem. You did. What's your opinion in it? Um, I did watch it. Yes, my opinion is that guy's a moron. The guy that was debating him about the scenario is an absolute moron. At one point, so basically, uh, Bill shared a video. Bilal shared a video inside a Telegram group. So Bilal shared a video inside a Telegram group regarding somebody debating something about XRP. Two people are debating. One was against XRP and one was with XRP. And the one against XRP said, nobody's going to use XRP. And then the one with XRP said, so you're telling me nobody's going to use it. And then the guy that was against XRP said, okay, maybe some people will use it. And then the guy essentially that was with, and that was against XRP <laughs> said at one point, Nobody's going to use it. And the other guy said, well, what's your proof? Nobody's going to use XRP. And the guy who's against XRP said, Google is my proof. I'm sorry. If I'm debating someone and somebody tells me Google is my proof, you're a moron. If you tell me, you know, this PDF titled this, this, this from the International Monetary Front is my proof you know, proof that nobody's going to use this particular asset, then I would say, okay, sure, you know, I believe you. Send me the document. I'll look at the PDF document and I'll go, yes, I agree with you. But if I'm debating with you and you go, oh, uh, my proof is Google. I'm sorry, that's not even proof. That's nothing. So the guy that was debating was an absolute moron. Is it XOP? Is it we'll play it? Payments between Ripple and XOP, yeah. He also said that XOP is too much of a competition to shine. He said it won't be nothing to invest in. Hi, OCMF. How you doing, Kayon? You will... And we're back. Finally, you can comment on YouTube. Let's go. You can watch the whole debate. Everybody can YouTube, repost the live if you can. Everybody on YouTube, repost the live if you can. Let's go. Dazzle here as well. Let's go. Uh -huh. Can you explain the contracts, Miles, and using XLP? Yes, I can, but it's going to be a very long live show. Miles, op uh, opinions about Viot and the bull run potential. Viot has a lot of potential, mainly because of their IBM partnership. Miles is our Google, but better. <laughs> our Google, but better. Let's go, happy Pisces. Miles is our Google, but better. I, I'll take that. As a, you know, as a, it's the first time I've been called Google. Miles, where are you gone? I'm back. How to repost on YouTube, anyone? I don't know. I don't know how to repost on YouTube or why is it slowing down? What is happening? The connection is all over the place. Is it back? 
slowing down. Now we're back, we're back, and now it's fixed. Okay, smoke one. Every time when I see that interview, I was laughing so much. Every time the XLP influencer said, it's fixed, I think the screen is fixed, yeah. I like YouTube, let's go, I'm getting a blank screen. Is Can everybody on X still see me? Some people are getting a black screen on X, but can people see me on X still? Uh, I like YouTube miles, let's go. Uh, what green lights does XRP need for a positive price movement? The green lights XRP needs for a positive price movement is one. Is one, it needs the case to be over. Two, it needs the regulations. And three, it needs essentially the adoption rate. Did you catch Peter Siff about BTC ETFs? The problem of when they all want to cash at the, cash out at the same time. Yes, I did see it. And um, so Peter is a interesting type of man. So Peter is the same guy that goes around and tells everybody that. Essentially, Bitcoin is going to be going to zero or it has no valuations and or when everybody decides to cash out Bitcoin at the same time is the new scenario he's going with. Everybody's going to have difficulties cashing Bitcoin out at the same time. Nobody's going to cash out Bitcoin at the same time, first of all. It's never happened. and It's never going to be happening where everybody cashes out Bitcoin at the same time. Peter's a very odd man. Peter first said Bitcoin is going to go to zero, and then Bitcoin started going higher and higher and higher. And then Peter said, watch when you find out who owns Bitcoin, it's going to go to zero soon. And then Bitcoin went higher and higher and higher. And then we had Bitcoin ETFs. And now Peter is saying, essentially, that uh, when everybody cashes out at the same time, Bitcoin will go to zero. He just keeps on changing his scenarios of Bitcoin will go to zero every time something happens in the marketplace. Peter's an absolute moron. Let me tell you why Peter's a moron. Peter had a chance of buying Bitcoin at $11 per token. Peter had a chance of buying Bitcoin $11 per token, and he didn't buy it. So now he's just a bitter old man who didn't buy Bitcoin at $11, and instead of understanding the concept of blockchain technology, goes around and hates on Bitcoin because he missed his chance of buying it at $11. Everybody, the majority of the people on this planet, missed their chance of buying Bitcoin at $11. But nobody wastes their entire energy and time going around on different news channels and going, it's going to zero. Why is it going to zero? Because you missed out? How about you grow up, Peter, for once in life? Peter's just a miserable old man. You're good now? Yes, I can see you. Let's go. Vials alternate is around $4. Uh, or you'll see 10x from today. Would that be the maximum bull run of 2025 or more? More. Still go to more. I see you. Let's go. This is all good on X. Let's go. I see you on X. It popped up a black screen for a second. Um, Miles, why don't you debate like that? It would be very good for you and us all to understand from another perspective. Yes, um, I thought about it many times doing a debate. The only reason I don't do a debate is because I'll probably get banned. I mean, it's too soon. Um, because the way I debate is very different. You know, everybody sees me, you know, as the person I am who, you know, is very calm sometimes. I'm very calm sometimes. Um, everybody sees me as this person who's very calm. So, But when it comes to a debate, I'm very competitive when it comes to a debate because I know my facts and I stick to the PDF documentations. So when it comes to a debate, I tend to make people um, either block me because, you know, in the debate, they can't handle it too much. And I tend to make people, you know, cry or, you know, and so on. And it's not a good scene to see. So 
because I corner people using. So I have this low. I have low background. I have a low background, and I use that low background to corner people using their own words against them. And a lot of people don't like it when I use their own words against them too much, and I make them look stupid in front of everybody. And not and a lot of people don't want to look stupid, especially not on live. So when I tend to do that to people. It makes me look like a bad person, even though I'm correct because I'm sticking to the facts. And, you know, I still look like the bad person somehow because I cornered somebody using their own words. So that's why I don't debate. And it's too soon for debates. Let me, you know, put my foot on solid grounds on X. Okay, let's put the CMF on solid grounds. on C uh, Let's put the CMF on solid grounds on X and YouTube. Let's get the followings up and let's get to a stage where... I can't be banned because it's, the CMF is too big to be banned. But because we're a small channel, but that you know we're growing every day. But because we're a small channel, they might try to ban us and so on. So let's just get on solid ground before we start cornering people and <laughs> using their own words against them in a debate. Maybe Peter is a sleepy job. Tell him, Miles, he will wake up soon, <laughs> brother. Okay, Miles, pretend it's summer 2027. You wake up and check your portfolio. What price is XRP? Great question. Very high is the answer. Can't debate with idiots. Uh, you debate like an animal with facts and facts. I like to see that, bro, to be honest. I would love you to do that, Miles. You are a natural debater. Did you do debate <laughs> at school? No, I didn't do debating at school, but being in the corporate sector, so when you're, you know, um, depending on what category of corporate you're in, if you're in the category, you know, essentially of negotiations, which is essentially what I was in in the corporate space and still am, it's heavily debate. You know, it's just debating 24-7, trying to negotiate a deal. So that, that's essentially where my aggressive pattern comes from regarding debating. And also the low background, you know, kicks in somehow. Rather because text green over uh, game over. Um, rather before XRP ends case and then after because then nothing or debate against. Yeah. True. When are you having your meeting with Mia? I'm still waiting for Mia to get back to me. She said um, she's in Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. Mia said she's in Alaska with... Um, Chris and when they get back from Alaska is essentially when we're going to be looking into this um, meeting work from the base and grow exactly why should you be banned on X after a debate it's an opinion oh well unfortunately I make people uncomfortable when it comes to debates because I you know I don't lose in general I don't lose when it comes to debating especially when it involves, you know, some sort of corporateness about it. And XRP has a lot of corporateness about it. So I don't lose when it comes to debates because I'm very well prepared. And, you know, and as I said, if I corner somebody using their own words, it will look bad for me somehow, even though I will most likely win the debate because I'm good at what I do. But... You know, it's too soon for debate, I would have to say, because a lot of people will start blocking the CMF because I, I'll debate with them and their followers might not like it as well. There's so much to go with social media debating. So if I do corporate debating, it's me with, you know, four other people inside of a conference room and we're debating and we're trying to do a negotiation, for example. OK, so if, I, if I'm doing and it's not just about that, I'll, I'll tell you a scenario. I don't think you get banned, to be honest, on X by that debate, but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I should even pay to see the debate. <laughs> I'll tell you why regarding the debate. Because if I'm in the corporate scene, okay, I'm debating and negotiating with four people around the conference table. That's it. So I'm if, I'm in if I'm inside a corporate space and I'm negotiating and debating, I'm debating with four people, five people max around one conference table. Okay? Now... If I debate with somebody online on social media, I'm not only debating with that pace with that person, I'm debating with their entire followings. That's the issue. So I'm not only debating with you know um, the person I'm debating with, but I'm somehow debating with their followers as well. And then those followers can become problematic 
you know, they could start flagging the live show for no apparent reason because they didn't like the way I debated with the person they follow. Do you see where I'm going with this? So it's not just about I'm debating one person. I'm also debating their followers, for example. And their followers could start being annoying. They could start flagging the live, um, the, live, uh, the live shows for no apparent reason and start causing a lot of trouble and so on, headache for the CMF, which I don't want to do. I've always said to you, don't think about today, think about tomorrow. If I do something today, it will impact tomorrow, in other words. So if I debate somebody, I'm not only debating that person, but I'm debating their followers. And their followers might not like the way I'm debating with the person they follow, and they might stop flagging the live show or just being annoying to the CMF. That's why I won't, you know, debate too soon. Always think about tomorrow. Whatever you do today impacts you tomorrow. Because in the corporate scene, I'm only debating with four people around the conference table, not an entire following list. Have you asked her um, regarding Mia? No, Mia was asked, she responded to me. The last thing she responded to me was um, she wants to get my knowledge and get the uh, my business on the documentary. She's in um, Alaska right now. And when she gets back, she's going to be doing it. This is the last thing I heard from Mia. She said, sorry for not um, responding for a while. Um, she said, I was in Alaska. I'm still in Alaska. And I want to get your knowledge and I want to get your business, uh, you know, do some sort of recording and I'll get back to you and so on. I said, yeah, no problem. And, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, getting back to me and I understand that you're busy. So now I'm just waiting, in other words, for me and Chris. I understand, brother. Uh, but can you be banned for that? Maybe you can be. You can debate on a back of account. There's no point debating on a back of account. I'll be honest with you. But you no. Well, you can be if too many people flag the live show for no apparent reason. But Miles XLP moons um, probably moon next month after the case. Then there's nothing to debate over XLP haters. It's okay. You know, just think about your wins. I don't care about debates or opinions. I just want to make some serious money. Exactly. Um, so yeah. Bill, just look at the money you're going to be making, okay? Let people hate around you. You know, you can't go around and, you know, try to wake up everybody. I realized that a long time ago. You can only help people who want to be helped. You can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. I personally attached to any cryptocurrency. I want knowledge how to expand it. Exactly. Um, any knowledge about project on ongoing partnerships with XRP? That happened a while ago, but we're still waiting for updates regarding them. Now, moving on to Spot Ethereum ETFs. Spot Ethereum ETFs hold 50% um, approval for May, according to JP Morgan analyst. Banking giant JP Morgan, in a recent report, predicted the likelihood of a Spot Ethereum exchange traded fund ETFs. Receiving approval in May stands at a mere 50%. What happened? The research report quoted by Coindesk suggests that the ongoing U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, investigation into firms associated with Ethereum ETFs, USD Foundation, could potentially affect the approval of spot Ether, Ether ETFs in May. And with his initial viewpoints from January, JP Morgan continues to assert that the approval of these ETFs in May is unlikely. The SEC is expected to deliver final verdicts on the several ETF applications by May 23rd. So by May 23rd, the SEC has to give some sort of an opinion on several ETF applications. Now, quote, for, quote by quote is what was said here. If there is no spot ether ETF approval in May, then we, and then we assume there's going to be a litigation against the SEC after May, stated the team of J.P. Morgan's analyst led by Nicholas. Now, Nicholas was the lead analyst again on this scenario. And the bank anticipates that the SEC will eventually lose its litigation, drawing parallels with the Grayscale and Ripple cases. That's an interesting one as well. 
JP Morgan's analyst, Nicholas, has essentially said that they could see potentially the bank, I mean, the SEC losing to Ripple's case as well. It expects the SEC to ultimately greenlight the spot ether ETFs, maybe not in May, but a little bit after May. The report also underscored that a diminishing concentration in Ethereum staking could enhance the chances of Ether, ether um, evading a security designation. Why it matters. The approval of a spot Ether ETFs could mark a significant milestone for the cryptocurrency market. However, the ongoing SEC investigation into companies likened with Ethereum Foundation poses an investigation, could set a precedent for future cryptocurrency ETF approvals. Furthermore, the potential litigations against the SEC, um, as a suggested by JP Morgan, could lead to a significant changes in the regulatory landscape for cryptocurrencies. The bank's prediction of the SEC losing such litigations as such in the grayscale and ripple cases could further influence the future of cryptocurrency ETFs. It's interesting that Nicholas decided to use the video as well. When are you having the meeting with Mia? Shelly, is that the question that I that I have missed? When am I having a meeting with Mia? The last time I spoke to Mia, she said she's in Alaska. And she said she apologizes for replying too late. Um, she said that she's Alaska, she's doing recordings. And obviously, I said I understand because, you know, um, they're doing a documentary, which is very important. And then um, she said to me she wants to get my knowledge and my business into the documentary. Now I'm just waiting again for a timeline. Um, so let's just see when she's going to get back to me again. So she didn't get back to me for a while. And then she suddenly got back to me and said, you know, she's finishing up in Alaska with Chris and regarding the documentary. So I'm guessing when she gets back to the state she's from is when we're going to be doing my one because my ones are very different. Everybody else is inside the United States and I'm in the UK. So my one has to be over either a Zoom call or a Google um, call meet, for example. So my one's quite different regarding the recordings. But I'm on the list. I'm just waiting for now the timeline again. But she apologized for not getting back to me for a while, is what Mia said. Um, I have lots of trust in you. Let's go. Mars, if the XRP influencer said um, that for XRP to be high priced, then it needs to be new SEC chair for crypto friendly. True opinions. Not really. She asked about the debate. She asked about the debate. She asked about the bit uh, below. Elaborate. Even the models and CMF. Hope you're well, Joe. Good to see you. How you're doing? I like this new layout. Let's go, Joe. Shelley's question was different regarding the debate. Oh, uh, no, it was uh, this whole theories about XRP. Oh, the spell theories about XRP. Okay, my comment comes into a different order. <laughs> okay, let me go back up for Shelley's comment. I, uh, you missed my comment, and then I go back up, back up, back up. Shelly, your previous comment is regarding Mia. That's the only one I see. And then you said, I would love you to do miles. Okay, here we go. Um, actually, before that, you said, I would love uh, you to do that, Miles. You are a natural debater. Did you do debating in school? Is that was your question, Shelly? Did I do debating in school? Um, no. Uh, I learned um, how to debate correctly inside the corporate space. Um, is when I started doing heavy negotiating is when I got more into debating. Are you able to hold comment smiles? Yes, I'm able to I'm able to hold the comments. I can see everybody's comments. I can scroll through everybody's comments on one section. So I have YouTube and X comments in front of me. So I have members that are tuning in from YouTube and members that are tuning in from X. I have both of them in one column. And I'm just using my MacBook to scroll through them up and down. Miles, don't worry about it.
the comments I said a moment ago comes after where J comment twenty seconds ago. Can you dispose some of the comments that the guy made specifics with specifics? Um Miles don't worry about it, let's move on. Yeah, we're gonna move on, but regarding that Shelly Wait, um in relation to why XRP will move. In relation to why XRP move, okay, XRP uses a gas token. Okay, for everybody out there, I'll make it very simple. For everybody out there, she asked about the debate. Um, the big notes you want to tell us about the arguments that Morons makes. Ah, okay, okay, Shelly, now I get it. Okay, I wasn't going to move on. I was going to still, you know, give us uh, even a gist at least to what Shelly said as well. Um, so, Shelly, the simplest answer is XLP is always going to be used. Any, anybody that tells you that XLP is not going to be used, they don't understand what XLP is or what, what Ripple Labs essentially does. Ripple Labs moved on from the idea of Ripple uh, Net. So, Ripple Net was something that Ripple used to use a long time ago. Now, Ripple uses Ripple Payments. Ripple Payments utilizes the XLP ledger. So, Ripple Net never used to utilize it correctly, the XLP ledger, and could work separately. However, Ripple Payments is what Ripple has now. Now, Ripple Payments utilizes the XLP ledger, essentially. Now, XLP is used as a gas token for every, every type of transaction that happens. Okay, so XLP is going to be used in all sense, essentially. So that moron telling people that um, it's not going to be used and it's, nobody's going to be using it and so on, that guy's an absolute moron. He hasn't read a PDF document in his entire lifetime regarding XRP and he doesn't know what he's talking about. XRP is used as a gas token and a gas token is going to be used. If I do anything on the ETH chain, I'm going to be paying gas fees in Ethereum. If I do anything on the XRP ledger, I'm going to be using XRP as a gas token. So XRP is always involved is what I would say that I'm more on. For him saying that, it's not going to be used and so on. So, Shelly, I'm hoping that answered the question. Thank you. That's what I was after. No problem, Shelly. Now, uh, moving on to... Let's go, Shelly. Now, moving on to BlackRock. BlackRock moves signals growing institutional support for stablecoins and integrations. Okay, so the idea of stablecoins is here to stay. Why is the idea of stablecoins here to stay? This is actually big news coming from BlackRock. The reason why the idea of stablecoins is here to stay is because of BlackRock. Okay, BlackRock is the one leading the frontier regarding everything. So BlackRock moves signal growing institutional support for stablecoin integration. BlackRock, the world's leading investment manager, launching a digital USD institutional digital liquidity fund with, uh, with the operation on the Ethereum blockchain signals that blockchain is um, essentially anticipating a foreign move and has a huge possibility that stablecoins will be used in the US. Therefore, could be a big step towards fund operations in cryptocurrency space. BlackRock pioneers integration of stablecoins in traditional finance. Build Fund is the financial instrument that will ensure investors are able to convert shares into USDC, the USD pegged stablecoin, adding to the liquidity as well as providing opportunities for easy access to this coin. So, apparently, now USDC, which is from Circle, which is from Coinbase essentially, which leads back to BlackRock, can now be used. A stablecoin can now be used to essentially provide some sort of transaction volumes to BlackRock's fund. So if BlackRock is accepting stablecoins, believe me, everybody else is going to be accepting stablecoins because BlackRock sends waves throughout the corporate sector. If BlackRock does something, everybody else looks into it. Every other institution now is going to speak into stable coins. BlackRock is looking into stable coins and accepting stable coins. It makes a big difference inside a global space. So, Build Fund is a financial instrument that will ensure investors are able to convert shares into USDC and the USD pegged stable coin, adding to the liquidity as well as provide opportunities for access to the coin. This capability operates 24 hours a day and never, and never ceases. Therefore, it turns into an element between the traditional finance assets and cryptocurrencies. It is evident fact that the fact of merging conventional um, finance and cryptocurrency coins 
is being advanced through these mechanisms, hence helping the U.S. strengthen its regulatory strength structure of stablecoins. Now, Rain Sean Adams, crypto investors, and one of the top figures said on X, for example, that pushy financial institutions inside the United States are after stablecoins because they see benefits and potential they have. As a result, these companies' support will be unfolding a gap between stablecoins and central bank digital currencies, which will be issued by the banks and hosted on public crypto networks such as Ethereum, for example, for one of them. Effects of the regulation and crypto implementations. Government regulations can be advanced with some banks like BlackRock, so government's involvement can lead to financial stability of the stablecoins, since they hold a great weight and power in their actions. It's a given that jurisdictions and other relevant government bodies will adapt quick legislations and regulations on these digital assets and will be issued and regulated and operated. The differentiating bond between the price between producing credit institutions that are increasing inter, uh, interacting with a stablecoin in the markets gets Wall Street firms further predicted as being the development of private substitutes for central bank digital currencies. This integration of the two also points towards the possibilities of stablecoins and the rise of more user-friendly routing financial transactions through the integration of blockchain technology. Circle, the issuer of USDC, must be set for a possible IPO with likely decent growth opportunities. Instances like BlackRock, which throwing um, which through owning shares can be considered as a cryptocurrency refinancing traditional finance. Industry is a reminder about the fusion of cryptocurrencies and traditional finance, crypto-based trading unions, and digital funding streams such as Build Fund are predicted to offer substantial gains to blockchain communities unlike cash and coin and digital currency plays. The, the similar role of those in the financial markets by bringing legitimacy and widespread, essentially widespread acceptance inside traditional finance and digital finance regarding stablecoins and BlackRock. If the US decides to have its own CBDC, stablecoins would nevertheless emerge as an invention with all the core features such as systems being preserved, i.e. being open, permissionless and decentralized regarding stablecoins. BlackRock's recent development of stablecoin imminent structures is a groundbreaking step towards the integration of grassroots finance and the expanding phenomenon of crypto commerce. The petrol innovations would be pivotal for strengthening digital currency status, which became a tick of the financial circulations. Now, just to put it in perspective regarding decentralized situations of stablecoins and how this is milestone, how this is a major milestone as well. Now, one this is a major milestone because BlackRock going into stablecoins is an absolute major milestone. Now, just to put it in perspective, because BlackRock is leading the way, leading the way essentially in uh, BTC ETFs, it's, it's setting a precedented foot where everybody else is now following suit. And I said this previously as well. For example, with JP Morgan going towards AVAX for a sub green net regarding producing on the regarding tokenizations of AVAX, which made Citigroup back interested because. If JP Morgan is interested in AVAX, Citigroup goes, hang on a minute, let me look into AVAX as well. That's essentially what happens inside the corporate space. Now, with BlackRock going into stablecoins, now we're going to be seeing a shift happening in other institutions going towards stablecoins as well. Perfect timing, if you think about it, because Ripple's about to release their own stablecoin. So everything does work on a, some sort of a timeline, if you wanted to just say. Now, obviously, they are using USDC off the bat. But we have to see how things plan out. They are, they're not going to be most likely using USDC for the rest of you know eternity. They're going to be adding other stable coins to suit as well. And most likely because USDC has de-pegged multiple times in the past. Now, so that's a major milestone. BlackRock going to stable coins, major milestone for other institutions following in suit. Major milestone. Now, the other side. Regarding stable coins being decentralized. Stable coins are not decentralized in any sort of a way. For example, Tether, USDT, is a stablecoin, major stablecoin. However, USDT can be frozen, can be seized. They can blacklist your wallet from using your USDT. It's happened multiple times, and they still do it till this day. So the idea of stablecoins, you know, being decentralized and so on, and, you know, it's your full control, you have full control of your stablecoins, incorrect. Um, 
We can see that factual information coming out of Tether when they go around freezing and seizing people's accounts. Now, Tether says they're only freezing and seizing people's accounts if they're using their USDT to fund illicit activities. Fair enough. Just the idea of you being able to seize and freeze it doesn't make it decentralized in what sort of way. So it doesn't matter if you're using it for illicit activities or not. The idea of you being able to freeze it and seize it is not decentralized in any sort of a way. Um, so just want to put that out there as well. Regarding the, you know, they're, they're talking about how stable coins are decentralized and so on. In reality, no, they're not. Because the facts are there. So, major milestone for BlackRock. Miles JP Morgan's 50% chance are either yes or no. They're looking into yes. Like Miles said, the most people who are bearish are the ones who are waiting yes for XRP to moon but don't have any patience. The only option is to hate on XRP. Pretty much. Do you envision a major pullback after the Bitcoin halving? I envision both outcomes. Um, manipulation is something to always consider. So I do envision some sort of manipulation from institutions without a doubt. As I said previously, the more directors and institutions and hedge funds and so on are inside the playing field, um, expect a lot more manipulation, but also expect a lot more money. So I do see the outcome of manipulation heavily at all times, the moment, because we have a lot of institutions in play. Now, the idea of going the complete opposite and going absolutely ballistic is also on the on the lines as well due to the data and stats that's coming out regarding Bitcoin mining institutions not selling off their Bitcoins, the demand being here, the supply is here, the supply is going to go even lower. So there's the idea of going absolutely ballistic as well on both sides of the argument. Do you envision a major pullback um, after Bitcoin opening? I envision both sides, both sides of the outcome. Just wondering if we should dollar cost average now or wait for the pullback. Whenever you're you're unsure of how the market will play out, dollar cost average is always my method. Whenever I'm unsure, standing on the sidelines is the worst method. Now I've said this previously as well. In my point of view, there is a lot of projects that are you know still not where they need not where they're supposed to be. So for example, Solano is too expensive. So I wouldn't touch Solano with a 10 foot pole. It's too expensive. BNB, too expensive. A lot of projects are priced quite high. Okay, and I'm not saying they're not gonna go any more higher, but they're priced too high already. But what I am saying is there's other projects that are priced so low, they haven't even moved yet, but they're going to move. So XRP is still low, it's going to move. XLM, low. XDC, low. ACH, low. Um, Clay, low. Um, Beam is also low, it's going to start moving. There's a lot of projects hot, it's going to move, it's, it's very low as well. There's a lot of products that are low that haven't moved yet, is what I am saying. So the best move to always do is when you're unsure of how the market is, I always you know, play the safe route. Never stand on the sidelines and hold your money, that's the worst method. Either you're in or you're out. And I said this previously as well. Um, when everybody was telling people, you know, the market's going to... When everybody was selling all their assets, you know, everybody was making videos on TikTok, all these inf crypto influencers, I'm selling 90%, I'm selling 90%. And I said, you know, consider both outcomes going into the market space. And I said, don't be on the sidelines holding your cash, is what I did say. And uh, I said, you know, just have one foot in, one foot out. So dollar cost average, in other words. And... I was right because everybody that decided to sell 90% of their portfolios from the crypto influencers, then the market went to new highs with Bitcoin doing new highs and the market following suit, turned out I was right because I considered multiple outcomes going into the market space. It's foolish to say the market can only go one way. You've always got to consider multiple outcomes so you're not surprised. Now, the market can go a million different ways, but at least if you narrow it down to two to three uh, methods it could possibly go to, you have an understanding of where it's going to go next. By basing those methods essentially on data that's coming in. Basing the outcomes on data that's coming in. Is it true that Miles... Is it true that uh, is it true that XRP mouse won't go high before an XRP ETF and a new SEC chair is and why? No, incorrect. 
Um, regarding XRP won't go high because there is no XRP ETF. Incorrect. XRP doesn't need an XRP ETF to go high. Obviously, that does push XRP, but it doesn't need to have an XRP ETF for it to go high. That's incorrect. And regarding there needs to be a new chairman from the SEC, that's also incorrect as well. This case is coming to an end. It doesn't matter if it's Gary Gensler or Gary Gensler's cousin who's going to be the chairman of you know, the SEC. It doesn't matter if, it's, if we're going to be you know, Gary Gensler's grandfather, Gary Gensler's brother or Gary Gensler's cousin. It doesn't matter who the chairman of the SEC is. A case is a case and a result is a result. So that's also incorrect information as well. So no, it doesn't matter. So, um, so no, in those terms, no, it doesn't matter. So if everything is coordinated timeline, then when are we all going to start making money? Should be looking into it this year. This year is all about regulations. It's all about institutions. It's all about banks. This year is going to look on the upside. In general, we're going to go, you know, ups and downs. We're going to go through pullbacks and corrections and manipulation. These are all factors that never take out the market space, okay? In general, we're going to go through ups and downs. We're going to go through pullbacks and major uh, manipulation as well because we have so many institutions coming into the market every single day and um, adding on to the list. But in general, we are on the upside going into this year. Because the amount of money coming in. All you have to do is look at the data. I mean, think about it. BlackRock is closing in on $20 billion on the ETFs. We have major ETFs coming into play. This case is about to come to a resolution. Um, the SEC lost majorly against Coinbase on secondary sales, which is beneficial for XRP as well. And so many other things happening inside the market space. So many other institutions coming into play. Companies are going public. CBDCs are coming out. So, so many things are still happening. We're still earlier on in three years. Six years holding for twenty pounds. Six years holding for twenty pounds. What about XLM Mouse? Is it still low and has stagnated over the last few months? Yes, XLM is still very low for what it is, and um, very low for what it is. Middle of April now and zero case news yet. Well, because technically we're not middle of April yet. It's twelfth of April. It's twelfth of April. It's twelfth of April. Um. <laughs> Not middle of April yet. But here's the thing, around 20, not the middle, but around 26 of April, around 26, we should have some sort of resolutions coming out, some sort of remedy services coming out. Now, just out of curiosity, before we go on to the next news, because it's actually quite, actually, you know what, I'm going to give you the next news first, and then I'll ask the question next. Because the next news is quite major. Bitfinex. Bitfinex Securities Pioneers. Tokenized debt offering for new Hilton Hotel in El Salvador. So something major that's going on right now in El Salvador is they're tokenizing debt. Which is something everybody's talked about for a while regarding tokenizing a different set of debts. So Bitfinex Securities Pioneers tokenized debt offering for new Hilton Hotel in El Salvador. Bitfinex Sec um, Securities El Salvador SA DCV is at the forefront of transforming the capital markets in El Salvador with its recent announcement. The company is launching a tokenized debt issue dubbed HILS fee to finance the construction of a Hampton by Hilton Hotel complex at El Salvador International Airport. This token will trade against the US dollar and Tether USDT and will be issued on the Liquid Network, a prominent Bitcoin sidechain. The partnership with um, Lugundo and the engagement of Dibitul Banix um, for the tokenization process underscores the innovative approach to financing. They're starting to do financing through tokenization in El Salvador, building a Hilton Hotel at the airport. The HILS, uh, HILSV tokenized debt aims to raise $6.25 million, offering investors a 10% coupon over five years with a maximum investment of $1,000. This initiative not only paves the way 
for novel investment opportunities in the region, but it also contributes significantly to the local economy by funding the development of a 4,484 square meter hotel complex. The project is anticipated to create thousands of jobs, thereby stimulating economic growth in El Salvador. Bitfinex Securities to facilitate first ever El Salvador tokenized asset raises $6.25 million, tokenized digital assets for the new hotel at the El Salvador International Airport, explore investment opportunities with El Salvador's tokens with the HILSV tokens on Bitfinex Securities. Bitfinex Securities granted first license for operations in El Salvador in a landmark move. Bitfinex Exchange, Bitfinex Securities, obtained the first ever license for, uh, for the operation in El Salvador under the new digital asset securities law. This achievement highlights the company's commitment to complying with local regulations while pioneering the integration of digital assets into traditional financial markets. The license enables Bitfinex Securities to offer its customers a variety of financial asset issuance beginning with the HILSV tokenized debt. This, de this de development is a part of El Salvador's broader efforts to embrace cryptocurrencies and digital assets, further demonstrated by granting Bitcoin legal tender status and launching initiatives to attract customer investments into the country. Embracing digital transformation in financial markets, the collaboration between Bitfinex Securities and El Salvador represents a significant step towards modernizing the country's financial infrastructure by leveraging digital asset laws and blockchain technology. El Salvador's positioning itself as a leader in the adoption of innovative financing mechanisms. The HILSV tokenized debt offering not only places the construction of a key tourism infrastructure, but it also opens up new avenues for investment and economic development. This initiative serves as a model for how dig digital assets can be harnessed to drive growth, accessibility, and capital markets globally. Why is this massive? Why is this massive? Is because this is the first, first of all, this is the first ever tokenized debt by an actual government entity. This isn't some random company doing it privately by themselves. This is El Salvador's government with Bitfinex Exchange doing this. It's securities debt. They're tokenizing their debt and building a Hilton Hotel at the airport of El Salvador. A, ma a, a crazy 4,448 essentially square meter um, um, Hilton Hotel, extremely modern Hilton Hotel. Not only that, everybody gets to invest. Regular people, okay, regular people can invest $1,000, okay, $1,000 into this project, into the tokenized debt of this project, and gets returns from the hotel when it's operational. So you can invest $1,000. Right now, apparently, you can invest through Bitfinex Securities, through Bitfinex Exchange. You can apply for applying for the tokenized debt of projects saying a thousand dollars of the Hilton Hotel that's going to be built in El Salvador at the airport, and you get returns on your money coming in. This is going to be the start of El Salvador doing this, and other countries following in suit on regarding tokenizing debt and doing real estate. This is going to change the real estate space forever, where the retail section gets to actually come into the playing field of genuine real estate with massive projects and get massive returns in long-term process. So genuinely, this is an absolute milestone. This is a bigger milestone than BlackRock using stablecoins, in my opinion, because this is the first one ever to do tokenization of debt. It's the first one to do with a massive project like the Hilton Hotel in El Salvador. This is crazy what they're doing right now. But it also has the downside of maybe it goes south and the project doesn't get built and everybody loses their investment. So <laughs> you've always got to weigh on both sides. A lot of construction projects do go south, so keep that in mind as well. But this is the first of many, I'm guessing. If this goes well, if this hotel is being built and it's built and it's ready to go and this hotel is doing very well for itself... This is going to set the momentum for any other project out there, for any other company out there. So if you want to go and check this project out, Bitfinex Exchange, I'm guessing already lists it, Bitfinex, you got to go to Bitfinex Securities. Bitfinex Exchange is the only exchange that has a license from El Salvador. 
and they're doing it through Bitfinex Securities. If you have a thousand euros to spend in XLM, XDC, and ACH, how will you do that for me? If I was going to spend a thousand euros, if I had a thousand euros, how would I do that? Fifty pesos. Okay. Um, split freeway. I would do split freeway in XLM, XDC, and ACH. I'll do split freeway. Bilal is like me. He just wants the bull run to start so we can. <laughs> Um, make some don't. Uh, beginning of the month, you said that you think that April was a settlement. I think you said, are you thinking now May or June? No, I didn't say beginning of the month. I didn't say April is a settlement. I said this year. I've always been saying this year is going to be the end of this case. I never said April is going to be a settlement. I said this year is going to be a settlement. I said this year is going to be case closed, is what I did say. So this year I said it's going to be case closed. I said everything is perfectly falling into motion for this year regarding regulations, regarding banks and institutions coming to play. And I said this year is the case closed scenario of Ripple versus SEC. I really do hope, I said 2024 is going to be the ending of this case. I really do hope things go parabolic after the Bitcoin halving. Let's go, Joe. Ripple needs to offer a thousand um, pounds fine, probably win. <laughs> Miles, this is mind blowing regarding El Salvador. Yes. Um, sounds like jury initiatives to solve issues where companies are in financial difficulties as well. Yes, it does. It's great on that scenario. El Salvador's new president had one of the best speeches ever a couple of months ago. Interesting. Rather than just one other company having to bail a, str a struggling company out, there will be several <laughs> people contributing. Yes, people are contributing, but people benefit from the contributions. So how it works now is because it's tokenized debt, it's on the crypto, it's on the blockchain essentially, it's on the Bitcoin network, on a subnet Bitcoin network essentially. So if you you know participate into a real estate company building something, um, like this one for example, uh, on Bitfinex Securities in El Salvador building a Hilton hotel at the airport, essentially you become a part of that project. And when the project is ready to go and it opens its doors. You own a share, essentially, in that Hilton Hotel. As a per as a person that invested a thousand, for example, dollars in this scenario, you would own a share of that hotel, of that tokenized share of that hotel. Which means, you, essentially, you would get a five percent return. Is what they're saying, but they haven't described it as how long that five percent return should be coming into you. Uh, actually, no. Here we go. Uh, so here you go. The HILS V tokenized debt aims to raise six point two five million dollars, offering investors a ten percent coupon over five years with a minimum investment of a thousand dollars. So you'd be earning money essentially over time on that. So it's not contributions; you're investing into it. It's not contributions. Contribution is you're contributing, and you say goodbye to that money, and you never see it again. Um, investing is when you get that return, essentially that investment back on a percentage return. I will invest. I will invest. Can you send me the details, please, Miles? Um, sure, I'll take a look. At it. I only invest what I can afford to lose. Fair enough. Not, um, not if I'm running the project. Not if I'm running the project is what JP said. So now, I, um, Shelly, um, so you're not contributing. So I wouldn't say contribution. I would say, you know, if anybody does invest into that project, you're technically just investing into that project as an investor that's going to be getting returns over time. And El Salvador most likely won't be the first one to do this. Um, they're going to be the first one to do this, but everybody else will follow in suit regarding the real estate market space. The El Salvador uh, new president immediately got rid of 30% of its government workers and is of there. He limited... He el eliminated many executive offices that were useless, waste of money. I would invest in that Hilton project in El Salvador. Let's go, Abby Pisces. Um, I'm investing every penny. Let's <laughs> go, Bill. Apparently, everybody from the CMF now wants to invest into the Hilton Hotel. I'm not invested into the Hilton Hotel in El Salvador because something you have to know about construction projects, okay? There's always a good and a bad regarding construction projects, okay? If... Um, the Hilton Hotel is not able to raise 6.2... What do they need? They need $6.25 million. If the Hilton Hotel in El Salvador is not capable of producing 
two, five million dollars, then you've essentially lost your investment. So it has to raise six point two five million dollars. If it doesn't raise six point two five million dollars, there's going to be difficulty getting your money out of it. But let's say you invest and it raises six point two five million, and the hotel is built, then you're making money yearly. Annually, you're going to be making money. Not a lot of money, but annually. Contribution is like a donation. That, yes, that is what a contribution is. But this is more like an investment because it has that risk factor to it. When it comes to a donation or a contribution, there's no risk. There's no risk in a contribution or donation because, you know, if you invest the money, it's a donation or contribution, you're not expecting to get any sort of returns. This, you're expecting to get the return. But if it goes south, then you won't be able to get that return. So, I don't know if I will be investing in this, but I'm going to be definitely keeping my eyes open on future projects that are similar to this in a different jurisdiction, I would have to say. For example, if they did this in London, I would be quite interested. If they did something like this in London, I would be quite interested. Because I understand the real estate space in London, I'm not too familiar with the real estate space in El Salvador, but I am familiar with the real estate space in London. And I do know for a fact that prices don't stop, they just go higher um, in real estate in London especially. Um, so if they were doing this in London, I know that the value would be good on it and it'll be a good return annually. But I don't know what the real estate space is exactly like in El Salvador, so that's why it wouldn't be an investment opportunity for me. However, the concept of what they're providing is amazing, and it's definitely going to be setting, you know, a precedent and move for everybody else to follow in suit. It's a great idea, but not ideal location. El Salvador is Cook Island, a bit risky. If I didn't have the flag name, if it didn't have the flag name of Hilton, I'd be concerned. I'm not concerned with the Hilton, but uh, I'm not concerned with the Hilton brand. Yeah, it does give it that aspect of, you know, it's the Hilton Hotel, so that's good in that sense. Uh, about London, major, about London, major to give everyone, mail, sorry, um, to give everybody crypto to spend. What crypto will it be? Or there will be CBDCs? I don't have a clear understanding. Um, regarding the... The, the London token situation. So it's going to be called London token. It's not confirmed. But everybody inside London will receive £100 worth of a cryptocurrency called London token. It's not confirmed. Um, we're still waiting for, you know, is it going to be a confirmation or not in any sort of way. But it's going to be called London token. And you can use it for public transport. It's to get everybody adapted into cryptocurrencies that isn't still adapted to cryptocurrencies, essentially. Now, they said it's a cryptocurrency and not a CBDC, but they haven't implied which sector of cryptocurrency is it. It will be fine. Not for me, Miles. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe Donald Trump will throw 10 million at them and just change the name of the hotel. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, misunderstanding. I meant multiple people can invest rather than just one company. Yes, facts. Um, yes, Shelly, I think I misunderstood you. So apologies, Shelly, for that. I think I misunderstood you then. Um, sorry about that, Shelly. Yes, uh, you're correct. Uh, it basically means multiple people can um, contribute to it. Yes, facts. Let's go, Shelly. Open your minds to the future. Let's go. So be there. I was answering Shelly's question about this contribution. I said that it's like a donation, not an investment. Four pen. I'm still laughing. This will get people thinking. <laughs> El Salvador is really getting cleaned up. He has cleaned up the gangs, drug lords. It's going to be a very popular destination in five years. I would have to agree. Yes, El Salvador over the years is going to become an amazing place over the years. 
Five years especially is a long time. It's going to become an amazing place over the years. As long as he remains in power, as long as the person that's in charge of El Salvador remains in power and does what needs to be done, it's going to become an amazing place over the years. I would have to agree, yes. But, I mean, this is just going to be setting waves in the market space. It's never been done. Also, Kraken Exchange is going to be delisting privacy token. So, Crypto Kraken Exchange joins Binance in delisting privacy coin Monero. Kraken, a leading cryptocurrency exchange, announced its decision to delist the privacy coin Monero for its customers in Ireland and Belgium, starting with those two jurisdictions first. What happened? Kraken will um, seize all XMR trading and deposits starting May 10th. An official press release stated the exchange has advised its customers to close all margin positions by this date to avoid forced closure. XMR withdrawals will be halted on June 10th post, which may um, essentially any remaining of XMR balance will be automatically converted into Bitcoin. Everybody's privacy token, XMR, will be converted to Bitcoin if they don't remove it from Kraken from crack Exchange. Now, they're starting with two jurisdictions compared to everybody else. Kraken's decision to delist Monero follows a similar moves by other major exchanges. Binance delist Monero from its main privacy, uh, from its main platform in February after flagging several privacy coins. Um, also delist the privacy coins on uh, Belgium September 2023. OKX, another crypto exchange, Followed in suit by delisting Monero and alongside um, Zcash and Dash in January that happened. Why it matters that the delisting of privacy coins like Monero is largely driven by the upcoming European Union um, regulations, the AMLR. The regulation is expected to receive final approval this month and it will prohibit crypto asset services from offering um, essentially accounts for privacy coins. The regulations will be enforced in three years after its publication around summer 2027. The move by summer 2027, the move by Kraken and other exchanges to delist privacy coins is a clear indication of increasing regulatory pressure on cryptocurrencies, particularly essentially those that offer high levels of privacy and autonomy. These developments underscores the challenges faced by privacy coins in navigation, the regulatory landscape, and the potential impact of the reduction and use. So um there we go another exchange that's delisting privacy coins by the looks of it all exchanges will be um, delisting privacy coins mainly because of the european union the european union is putting high pressure on crypto exchanges because by the end of this month they should be coming up with a set of new regulations which means they have to remove privacy coins so binance already removed privacy coins okay x did the same thing Kraken is doing it now, and other exchanges are going to follow in suit. Can't wait for... Can't wait for businesses having Bitcoin advertisements. This will happen. Shelly knows she's a smart girl. Yes, Shelly's very intelligent. Yes, that's true. Um, Smarty, smart, Smarty Mobile ad, um, advertising is a first. Good on them. I hope all exchanges. I hope all exchanges delist all the zoo coins and Pepe's cousin. Good night, Miles in a CMF. Great live. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Miles. JPC tomorrow, but sometimes as usual. And also, we have come to the endings of this live show as well. So, for anybody that tuned in late, just the gist of everything we talked about. Yeah, but much month you think there will be a settlement, but which month do I think is this year? In general, it's going to be this year. 
Um, but May is the latest, and I said two weeks maybe after if they want to stretch it. There's nothing for them to stretch it over to. That's the only issue. So if you tuned in late on today's live show, oh, I didn't say you said that. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> if you tuned in late on today's live show, we talked about Kraken Exchange, how they're going to be delisting privacy coins. We also talked about El Salvador doing the first ever tokenization of debt, building a hotel at the El Salvador airport, a Hilton hotel, which people can invest into up to a thousand um, dollars into it and get an annual return in some sort of a way from it. But it's the first ever move of tokenization debt of doing construction work. We also talked about the BlackRock's move regarding um, going into... And we're back. We also talk, talked about BlackRock's move regarding um, stable coins as well. The screen just went black for a second, but came back. And we also talked about Ethereum's chance of getting a spot Bitcoin, e spot Ethereum ETF. Um, and the chance is about 50% approval rate. That's coming from Nicholas. Who's a JP Morgan analyst? We also talked about the BCA research, who have said that Bitcoin could reach over the price value of $100,000 and the supply is here and the demand is here going into the halving, which is a bullish sign. We also talked about the Thai crypto exchange on today's live show as well, regarding it going public, a $3 billion valuation of a Thai crypto exchange, the biggest Thai crypto exchange, going public soon, either this year or next year is what they're aiming for. We also talked about HSBC Bank saying that if you hold cryptocurrencies in your portfolio, it's maybe not a bad thing, is what HSBC Bank is saying. They said 1-5% to allocation into cryptocurrencies in your portfolio is actually a good thing. And we also talked about regarding Australia maybe charging people 5 Australian dollars yearly, so annually, um, for keeping their information, their information private. So that data is not sold to third-party companies if they use CBDCs. And we also talked about Ripple's CEO talking about regarding XRP ETFs and is there a possibility. And according to him, there still is, is the question he was asked at the Paris blockchain event. So that is everything we talked about on today's live show. Good night, Miles of CMF. Great live, brother. Let's go, Dazzle. Dazzle, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual. Miles, I figured out. I figured you out. You're a bot. <laughs> You're a bot. Um, good. Let's go, Mike. Mike, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual. Um, good night, Miles. And CMF family, it was a good idea of sharing with YouTube. Let's go. I'll see you tomorrow night. See you tomorrow night, Frankie, brother. So, just out of curiosity, um, good. That we're doing YouTube and X at the same time. Good night, Miles of CMF. See you tomorrow, Mike. Same time as usual, brother. So, doing the live show like this is it good? Should we, we should continue doing it like this? Good night, CMF. Same. See you tomorrow, same time as usual as well. Good night, Miles of CMF. Coin, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. Good night, Miles and CMF. See you tomorrow sometimes as usual, Carol. Same time as usual. See you tomorrow. Denise, yes, it's really good. Let's go. See you tomorrow sometimes as usual, Denise as well. Great, good. Dennis, good. Okay, JP, great. Okay, let's go. Good night, see you tomorrow, KDC. See you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. Take care, Miles of CMF. See you all tomorrow, please. The Lord. Good vibes. Let's go. Whatever is better for you, Miles. I get to hear the information. I'm happy. Let's go. Happy Pisces. Um, good night, brother. And CMF. Bill, I'll see you tomorrow sometimes usual as well, brother. Also, if you do get a chance, CMF. Yes, continue the live like this. Good YouTube. Mike, let's go. Good night, Miles and CMF. Don't see tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. And CMF, just, you know, optional. Whenever you do get a chance, if you want to, um, like and retweet the live show on X so we can grow this family even more. And if you're watching this from YouTube, if you want to, again, completely optional, 
like the live show so we can get more people joining it. I just switched to YouTube. I need boot box users for YouTube. Okay, CMF, honestly, thank you so much to every single one of you that's been tuning in from X, and thank you so much to every single one of you that's been tuning in from YouTube. Um, and thank you so much to every single one of you that's been engaging in the comment in the comment sections as well, and for helping people out in the comment sections as well, and for liking and tapping on the screen as well. Good night, Miles of CMF. Troy, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. This is good too on YouTube. Let's go. I will see everybody tomorrow. Same timing as usual. Everybody have a great day or a good night, depending on where you are around the world. CMF, see you tomorrow. Sometimes as usual. Everybody have a great day or a good night, depending on where you are around the world. You can create mods on YouTube, brother. Okay, that's good. Good night, CMF. Stormy, see you tomorrow. Sometimes as usual. Take care, Miles of CMF. Ray, see you tomorrow sometimes usual as well, brother. Night all, thanks, Miles. Shelly, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well, Shelly. 18,000 likes, got logged out, plus 10K. Let's go, Lena. Lena, thank you so much for 10,000. Lena, thank you so much for 18,000 likes and for the plus 10,000 likes. You know, thank you so much for that amount of that amount of that amount of likes. Genuinely mean it. Thank you so much, Nina. Shelly, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. Bill, see you tomorrow sometimes as usual as well. I will see everybody tomorrow, same time as usual. Everybody have a great day or a good night, depending on where you're around the world. CMF. See you tomorrow, same time as usual. Don't forget about the MXC. Yes, I'll take a look into it, John, regarding MXC, and I'll put it inside a Telegram group. See you tomorrow, everyone. Same time as usual.